Imagine yourself, the Queen of Egypt, on the losing side of a civil war against the most powerful empire of ancient times. Your beloved husband returning to you after losing a battle only to die in your own arms. The Roman Emperor, the leader of the winning side, just described your fate to you. Spend the rest of your life as his captive. What would you do? Would you be able to live as a hostage for the rest of your life? Hi, I'm Callum, the narrator of the No History YouTube channel, and this episode of the History of Poison delves into the story of Cleopatra, the last ruler of Egypt, and possibly one of the most well-known names in ancient history. Her story begins in 69 BCE, where she was born in Alexandria, Egypt. Although she is perhaps one of the most well-known Egyptian rulers, she was actually ethnically Greek, being part of the Ptolemaic dynasty of Egypt, founded by one of Alexander the Great's generals, Ptolemy I Sota. By this time, Egypt was a Roman client state, one plagued with rebellions and unrest, as Ptolemy XII, her father, was largely unpopular amongst his subjects. This upheaval caused a group of Roman senators to demand the total annexation of the kingdom in 65 and 63 BCE. Although rejected by other senators, this vote left a massive impact on Ptolemy. From this point onward, he would actively seek the approval of Roman senators by offering remuneration and lavish gifts to powerful Roman statesmen such as Pompey and Julius Caesar. This reckless behaviour bankrupted him however, and he was soon forced to acquire large loans from Roman bankers, which further destabilised his kingdom. To further complicate things, Rome annexed Cyprus, a traditional Ptolemaic territory, and made his brother, the ruler of Cyprus, commit suicide in order to avoid exile. Regarding this, Ptolemy would show no reaction. This, combined with the debt he was accumulating, made him extremely unpopular amongst the Egyptian masses, which led to his and Cleopatra's exile in 58 BCE, leaving his other daughter, Berenike IV, on the throne. His Roman finances were not keen to lose all the money that they had lent to him, and were determined to restore him to the Egyptian throne. In 55 BCE, the governor of Syria answered their calls and invaded Egypt, alongside him being a young cavalry officer by the name of Mark Antony. Upon recovering the throne, Ptolemy had Berenike IV and her wealthy supporters executed, and in 52 BCE he made Cleopatra his regent and joint co-ruler. Ptolemy would die the following year, when Cleopatra was only 18 years old, leaving her on the Egyptian throne. Nevertheless, since Egyptian tradition held that a woman needed a male consort to reign, she was ceremonially married to her brother, Ptolemy XIII, who was 12 at the time, a common Ptolemaic tradition. However, his name was soon dropped from all official documentation, and she would rule alone. She was a woman of many talents, one of them being her fluency in a number of languages such as Greek, Latin and Egyptian. The latter was quite a surprise however, as the Ptolemies insisted on Greek superiority and had been ruling Egypt for centuries without ever trying to learn its language. She on the other hand, understood the need for her people's customs to be understood in order for her to reign over them effectively. Nevertheless, Beside the three languages, Plutarch also adds that she spoke Ethiopian, Hebrew, Arabic, Syriac, Median and Parthian. Because of this, she was able to communicate easily with diplomats from other countries without the need for a translator. This quality, together with her charming personality, made her an extremely effective diplomat and administrator. Even though she was more than capable of ruling, her independent attitude made her unpopular amongst her court. In 48 BCE, her chief advisers, Potinus and Theodotus of Chios, and the general Achilles, overthrew her and placed her younger brother Ptolemy XIII on the throne, believing him to be easier to control. Cleopatra and her half-sister Arsinoe 
were forced to flee to Thebide for their safety. She would see an opportunity to reclaim her throne in 48 BCE when Caesar came to Egypt in pursuit of Pompey. She returned to Alexandria and unleashed her feminine charms on the Roman general, ensuring his support to her cause. Ptolemy turned to his general Achilles for support and a war broke out in Alexandria between Caesar's legions and the Egyptian army. The two were besieged in the royal palace for six months until Roman reinforcements arrived and broke the Egyptian lines. Some historians claim that it was during this siege that the great library at Alexandria was accidentally burned, albeit this claim has been challenged. As for Ptolemy, he drowned in the Nile while attempting to escape from the battle. The other leaders of the coup against Cleopatra were also killed either in the battle or shortly afterwards. Cleopatra, now the sole ruler of Egypt, travelled through her country with Caesar in great style and was hailed by her subjects as Pharaoh. She gave birth to a son, Ptolemy Caesar, known as Caesarian, in 47 BCE and proclaimed him as her sole heir. Caesar himself was content with Cleopatra ruling Egypt, as the two of them found in each other the same kind of stratagem and intelligence, bonding them together with a mutual respect. After Caesar's infamous assassination in 44 BCE, the Roman Senate became ruled by the Second Triumvirate, composed of Octavian, Lepidus, and a close friend of Caesar whose name you've already heard, Mark Antony. Mark Antony summoned Cleopatra to meet him, and with this meeting began one of history's most renowned affairs, one that would lead to her demise. Soon, she gave birth to twins, and would even later give birth to another son from him. The couple would eventually get married, and in 34 BCE, Antony appointed her as co-ruler of Rome's eastern provinces. This would change their lives forever. This act was deemed as treason by the Roman Senate, and as such, they recalled Antony and declared war on Egypt. On September 2nd, 31 BCE, both sides would meet in the Battle of Actium, where Antony's forces were decimated, and he and his remaining troops would be chased back to Alexandria. Most of his troops would soon desert him and join forces with Octavian. With no other refuge to escape to, Antony, upon hearing the false report of Cleopatra's death, stabbed himself. He learned too late, however, that she was in fact still alive and Octavian allowed him to be brought to the Queen, where he would die in her arms. As she saw herself stuck between a rock and a hard place, she chose not to bow to Octavian, however. She decided to end her own life on her own terms on the 10th of August, 30 BCE. But why? And how? The fact is, no one knows exactly what happened. It is unsure if Cleopatra killed herself, or was assassinated by her nemesis, Octavian. As said before, it is unsure if she committed suicide. However, assuming that that was the case, there are multiple options as to how she actually killed herself. The two main options are either death by snake bite or a possible cocktail of plant poisons. But what gives us these ideas? The first option is mostly supported by the ancient authors. At first, the snake believed to be used by Cleopatra was an asp. This fitted her royal status, as asps were representing the Uraeus, the sacred serpent of the ancient Egyptian sun god Ra. However, modern scholars believe that the most probable species was to be an Egyptian cobra, as its venom was much more potent. Even once we get past this disagreement, others occur. Some believed she was actually bitten by a snake, and others state that instead she injected the venom of the snake directly into her body. The latter is also popular, as it is known that Cleopatra carried out extensive studies of toxins. This was perhaps in anticipation that one day she might need an instant painless way out. She carefully took notes of every single effect of every single poison available to her, and as she couldn't test one herself, for obvious reasons, 
she tested them on prisoners that were already condemned to death. Every single twitch, cry, or contortion being recorded by her. This mystery could easily be solved as long as her burial site was known, as it would allow us to test her remains in search of a cause of her death. However, its location is as mysterious as her death. Plutarch states that Octavian ordered her body be buried alongside Antony with the most splendour and magnificence, but other than that, no other clues to her burial site are known. It is also believed that their tomb is located somewhere near Alexandria, however, despite many recent hopeful claims, its location has never been unearthed. Even though Cleopatra was only 39 years old when she tragically ended her own life, she had been ruling Egypt for 22 of those years, in an age where women rarely ever asserted political control over men, let alone rule an entire nation, she managed to maintain Egyptian independence while she held the throne. Though she was Macedonian Greek, not Egyptian, she has come to symbolise ancient Egypt in the popular imagination more so than any other Egyptian monarch. Cleopatra's death would continue to impress and captivate authors for millennia to come. The mystery behind her suicide and its tragic circumstances would inspire numerous pieces of art, plays, books and movies. Not a single century would be spared of a work of art related to her. Although she was a woman of many talents, she would not be mainly remembered for her wisdom, her amazing diplomatic prowess, nor her shrewdness. Instead, perhaps because of her gender, she would be remembered as a woman who seduced two of the most powerful men of their era and whose affiliations led to her demise. We will remember that Cleopatra slept with Julius Caesar and Mark Antony long after we have forgotten what she accomplished in doing so, that she sustained a vast, rich, densely populated empire in its troubled twilight in the name of a proud and cultivated dynasty. She remains on the map for having seduced two of the greatest men of her time, while her crime was to have entered into those same wily and suspicious marital partnerships that every man in power enjoyed.